I got a phone call the other day, and I'm going to tell this story. Turn to Jeremiah 6, and I'm going to tell this story, and it kind of goes along with what you said, but it doesn't go along with the message, I don't think. But anyway, I was uh, having some blood drawn one day here a few months ago, and uh, the lady that was drawing my blood, the way she talked, she just sounded like she knew the Lord. And she asked me, we was talking about before, she asked me what I did. And I said, well, I'm a minister. I pastor a church down in Festus. She said, amen, praise the Lord, you know. And just real sweet lady. And so um, we got all done, and the Lord was saying to me, Mike, next time you come up here, give her some of those DVDs on the blood. I said, okay. So next time I went up there, I handed her some, I said, I got something for you. She said, what you got? I got a present for you. And I said, you draw blood for a living. And I said, here's some things that I've done at our church about how the gospel is in your blood. And she looked at it, and, and I said, you take this and watch it, and I'll just leave you alone with that. All right, thank you. So I left her alone. About a week later, I saw her again. And I said, how'd you like those DVDs? And she said, well, I haven't watched them yet. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, go I'm a little down. So I said, okay, you know, that, that's all right. You know, when you get a chance, watch them, because I promise you, I promise you, you're going to like them, and there's a blessing in there. She said, okay. And you never know whether people are just being nice to you, and I'm being needy, or what. So I just left her alone, and I didn't say anything more to her. I probably have not seen her in months. I got a phone call the other day. She's, and the lady, and it, I didn't know it was her at the time, and she called and she said, yes, I would like to leave a message with Pastor Mike. Now, I didn't tell her who I was, because I'll do that. See, if you call and you don't recognize that it's me on the phone, I will not tell you that it's me. So she called and she said, I would like to leave a message for Pastor Mike. I said, okay, what would you like to tell him? <laughs> and she said, I got some DVDs on the gospel in your blood and she said I put the first one in I'm only halfway through the first one and I just had to stop and call your church and just to let him know that there is a blessing in here I went I said well amen and I said now I'm gonna tell you a secret she said what I said there's greater blessings if you keep watching the rest of them she said, I don't know how there can be. She said, I'm already just blessed. And I said, well, I appreciate that. She said, boy, I'd like to get me a bunch of these and give them out to people. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, I think I can arrange that. I said, if you'll call here during the week, my girls work here. And I said, they'd be more than glad to fix you up with however many DVDs that that you need she said I want to give them out for Christmas I said well we'll do that you just call us and tell us she said well how much are they I said ma'am we don't charge for these you don't I said, no we don't charge anything for them well I'm going to give you something I said well we'll take it believe me we'll take it I said but we don't charge for that and uh, she said I, and I asked her I said um, can I ask you a question she said yes I said how did you get a hold of these DVDs she said, well, Pastor Mike was in here getting his blood drawn. And I went, I know who this is. And I said, I know who you are. She said, is this Pastor Mike? I said, yes. Oh, my. She said, you weren't kidding. There's a blessing in these. And she said, I'm going to watch the rest of it. Now, listen to me, okay? I, you guys know me. I don't go around everywhere promoting Mike Hoggard. It's not what it's about. She did not say anything to me about how good I was or about how smart I was or how good looking I am or anything like that. To her, it was what I was saying and, and the truth of the word of God. Now, I didn't tell you, this was the sweetest black lady I've ever met in my life. And when she's going to say, when she says she's going to give these out to her relatives, I would love to be able to share the gospel with whoever she knows in her family, black, white, it doesn't matter, as long as they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe it, God's word and are saved. So you never, Ryan, you never know. 
those people that took that, you never know how they're going to respond to it. We may never know fully until we get cross Jordan to the other side. Then we'll know even as we are known. Church, keep standing. Keep going. It's okay to look back every now and then. In fact, that's what I'm going to preach about this morning. It's okay to look back every now and then and see where we've been. But let's keep going for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Take your Bible, turn to Jeremiah chapter 6. Are you there? Give me one minute. I got cotton mouth this morning. Jeremiah chapter 6. I want to begin in um, verse 13. And I want to roll down to verse 16 to give it context. In Jeremiah chapter 6, he's speaking against the prophets and the priests, the elders of Israel. And he says in verse 13, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, every one dealeth falsely. One of the things that I never, ever want to do in the ministry, something I never want to do in leading this church, is to, for the motivation of what we do to be based upon how much money this will bring in. I never want that. And uh, every now and then, God has to kind of reset my mind a little bit, get me focused now upon what He's saying and what He wants, rather than maybe something that I want. But I don't want it to be about covetousness. I don't want to deal falsely with people. Let me give you a warning. And you, you're going to, you hear this from me a lot. And you're going to keep hearing it. Be careful about the information you picked up from the internet. Because that information was more than likely designed to get 5 million hits on the internet so that they can be paid by the advertisers. Okay, be careful because some people deal falsely with stuff on the internet like the rapture is going to happen September 23rd. We're still here. Amen. So verse 14, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace, peace when there was no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. And at the time uh, that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Verse 16. Here it is right here. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for what? The old paths. I'm going to preach on that this morning. The old paths. And see, and, and where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Who believes that? Say amen. amen. The old ways. Not the new ways. The old ways. But they said, we will not walk therein. One of the things that I learned about Rick Warren, and we're going to go to prayer here in a minute. One of the things I learned about Rick Warren and his tactics... His design, and I read this for myself in his book, The Purpose Driven Church. His, he realized that his way of doing church would be in direct contradiction to the traditional way that some of the older people in churches would do it. And his, his methodology or his answer for that when he was telling the pastors... When you start, when, not if, you start getting opposition from the older folk in the church about what you're doing, just tell them kindly, why don't you leave and find another church to go to? In other words, put them out. Get them out. The older folk. There's churches. One that I know of in particular in this town. Where the older folk of the church didn't like what the new pastor was trying to push through in that church, and they left, and I'm talking about a church that has been here probably a hundred years in this town. And that church, they had no, uh, they had no authority, 
they didn't have enough people to put a stop to it in the church. And so they felt that there was no other choice but to leave that church and start another church that would be more in line with the scripture than what they knew that church was doing. And that is happening all over this country. And there are people that are probably watching online today because you could not go to the church because of the modernization that was going on. And it wasn't that they were just putting in new pews or new altars or a new pulpit. They were bringing in things that were obviously wrong according to the scriptures. And they said, we can't put up with this. And they had to leave because a majority of the people in that church were the younger generation and that pastor was catering to them and they forced those old people out. And here's what I realized. I was reading this verse one time. God dealt with me, Mike. He said, ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And you shall find rest for your souls. Who is it, Mike, that would know where all the old paths are? It would be the old people. Have you ever visited a town or been part of a town and then leave it and 20 years later go back? You ever done something like that? And when you go back, what do you find? It ain't like it used to be. It's changed, hasn't it? You still see part of the remnants of what used to be, but when you go back, you don't like it. You don't like it because it's all different than what you remember. And I think God built us that way. We had a couple of ladies in here. I don't know if you remember. They were sisters. They came and visited all the way from uh, Vermont, was it? Huh? Rhode Island. And she told me, she said, we grew up right, was trained right. And we were going to a Bible-believing church when we were teenagers. We got out. We got in the world. Went messed up in the world. Had our lives ruined by the world. And then God dealt with us and we, we came back to the same church that we left because we thought it would be the same. And she said it wasn't. And they said, we didn't hear our shepherd's voice in that church. We didn't hear it. We heard something different. And so we went to this, to that, to that, to that and we could, we could not find what it was that we were hearing that brought us to the Lord to begin with when we were teenagers until they started listening here and they found it folks bethel church i want you to look around at these young people young people wake up look around at these old people these are your teachers these are the people who have a responsibility to teach and to train you in the old ways. Because somebody has got to remember where the old paths are. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on this day. We thank you, dear God, for bringing us into this place. Lord, I love you. I love this church. I love these people. And God, you laid this on my heart, and I was really struggling with it and lord i'm not sure god that this is the message that you would have me to bring but this is what i'm bringing to the table today and so father lord i pray dear god that you would bless this my effort father that you would speak to people and help them and encourage them dear god this would be a message of of encouragement a message of comfort to people a message of hope dear god that things in the future can actually be better than they have been in the past. Father, help us to remember the good old days, but help us, dear God, to look forward to new and exciting days and look forward to that in hope that things that are coming are far better than things that we have left behind. Father, bless your word. Open up our minds. Give us wisdom, dear God. Help me to preach this, Lord, in, in a way that honors father what you would have said to this church because lord i don't know how to preach this and i pray god that you would help me today would you rise as our neighbor today and give us bread because we're on a long journey we turn around we look back we see the things that we left behind and yet father we look forward and we see our, an uncertain road 
Help us, dear God, to realize in our hearts, dear God, that we are going to keep the traditions, the things that have been handed down to us, Father. They're very precious to us. We're not going to give them away. Father, bless your people today. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want you to look up on the screen. I what, had kind of thinking about this thing last night. What I decided to do is kind of go back in a, a little bit of American pop culture. Things that we remember from times in the past. Now, this slide here goes all the way back in the 40s. Do we have anybody here who was from the 1940s? Couple of you. There's more than what's admitting it. I'm telling you that right now. Who remembers seeing some of these old Pepsi Cola signs around? There you go. Superman looks awfully different than he used than he does now, doesn't he? Who remembers giving or taking a bath in an old wash tub? That's that's not just a 40s thing, is it? Amen. Well, that's the 1940s. Uh, that's the 1940s. All right. This is the 1950s. Who remembers going on family picnics just for a picnic? Amen. Who remembers when hamburgers were 15 cents? A McDonald's hamburger, 15 cents. Amen. Drive-in movies. Who in here ever was stuffed in the trunk of a car to go to the drive-in movie so you didn't have to pay for them? By the way, you young people, if you've never seen one of these 1950s cars, the trunk is as big as this sanctuary. <laughs> Amen? They knew how to build a trunk back then. Amen. Now we get into the 60s. Who remembers Batman? Yeah. 1966 Mustang. Huh? You had a 65 Mustang and you don't still have... What is wrong with you, Linda C? <gasps> it's a good thing he's in heaven right now. Yeah. Who remembers, who remembers where you were when JFK was shot, when you first heard it? Yeah. Now let's get to the 70s. Here we go. Who remembers disco? Come on. Bell bottoms. The first microwave ovens came out in the 70s. Who in here ever really cooked their Thanksgiving turkey in a microwave oven? And all the ads, they used to have a golden brown turkey in that microwave oven. And if you ever put a turkey in the mud, they blow up. <laughs> Nobody ever successfully ate a turkey out of a microwave oven. Look at them clothes. Does any of you young people see that thing up on the upper left-hand corner? Does anybody know what that is? That's a Polaroid camera. Instamatic. You take the picture. <laughs> Gotta do this for a while. Peel that cover off, and boy, you got a nice picture in there. Amen. That's the 70s. Here's the 80s. Rubik's Cube. Space shuttle took off. Boom boxes. Personal audio devices. They were this big. That was my first computer, was a Commodore VIC-20 computer. Okay? Now, I don't have anything like in the 90s and stuff like that. I just, I just kind of... Now, here's what I'm noticing. Notice there's changes in each decade. Is there not? Clothes change. Restaurants change, people kind of change a little bit, fads change. Now let's go back to the 1940s again, and I'm going to contrast that with something that was also there in the 1940s. It was a King James Version Bible. People read it. 
If there was a Bible in somebody's house, more than likely it was a King James Bible. So from the decade from the 40s to the 50s, everything changed, but the Bible stayed the same. Same thing in the 60s were tumultuous years. The innocency of America. I talked about Hugh Hefner, who died and is in hell today. Hugh Hefner single-handedly destroyed the innocency of this nation. Without a doubt in my mind. That man, as far as I'm concerned, is getting what he deserved. And yet, in the, all the tumultuous times of the 60s, I was born in the 60s, I'm a child of the 60s. The King James Bible was always there, and it still remained unchanged. In the 70s, it was when I learned to read, and the very first Bible that I got was a King James Bible. When I was given memory verses by my Sunday school teacher, Miss Linda Carmichael, they were from a King James Bible. The Bible has always been there, and it's been without change. Now, Jeremiah said, seek ye out, ask the old paths, where is the good way? I'm going to put another picture up here very quickly, and then I'm going to move through scriptures, all right? Does anybody know where that is? Hang on. Anybody know where that is? Caleb, where is that? That's Festus Main Street. Looking, I guess, uh, east toward Crystal City, uh, there is the, the intersection of Main and um, Mill Street. It's right there. That was before the roads were paved. See that? That's the old paths. That's the way the town used to look. Somebody who was alive at that time we remember seeing that town and then coming back to it now, they wouldn't hardly recognize it. Because everything, some of those buildings had burned down. But they wouldn't recognize it because of the look and the way it was. And yet, God has remained the same on each of those. And the old paths that he's telling us to walk down are in this Bible. The traditions that you and I have are from this Bible. I'm not, I'm not advancing traditions just for the sake of tradition. Well, this is the way we always did it here. I'm not one of those. But if the way that we did it was given to us by our God in the Scriptures, then yes, that is the way we should do it. And we should never walk away from that. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Psalms, if you would. Psalms, chapter 44. Here's what God said. Psalm 44, verse 1. We have heard, uh, we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the times of old. You see, here's what I'm getting at today. If you can today remember some great thing, that God did in your life in the past. You can remember those things. Raise your hand. Say amen. Let me tell you. The hope that we have is. Is that the same God who did great things for us 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. He's the same God today. It's alright to look back. And remember the old days and remember what God did because we have the same God today. In fact, since we don't know the future, when we get into places where we're miserable, places where we're uncomfortable, places where we're depressed, places and times where we're not sure how it's going to turn out, look back to the former days to find out what God did because that's what God's going to do. Amen? He said, in the times of old, how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand. He's talking about Mount, uh, he's talking about the Red Sea. And plantest them, and how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. By the way, the same God that whooped you 30 years ago is the same God that's going to whoop you 30 days from now. Remember that? That's what, that's what whoopings are for anyway. Because every time we go to think, do something wrong, 
Our mind says, you remember the whipping you got? You want another one of those? No, I don't want another one of those. Then don't do it. Thou didst afflict thy people and cast them out, for they had got no land and possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but by thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tread them under uh, that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us. Hast is past tense. Thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. Amen. When as parents and grandparents and elders in the church, let it be our calling, our undertaking, our testimony to share with the younger generation who, as we see them grow, as we see them go through the troubling times in their life, let it be on us to go to them and say to them, let me tell you, when I was your age, I struggled with the same thing. When I was a little boy, when I was a little girl, I had the same problem. I had the same issue. Let me tell you what God did for me some 40 years ago when I was your age. Let me tell you the saving grace that God gave to me back when I was a young man, back when I was a young lady. And the same God that saved me some 50 years ago is the same God that can pull you out of the fire. Somebody say amen. You know what? I think I got the right message. Jeremiah 93, verse 2, Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. He's the same, the same God that was in charge yesterday is the same God that's in charge today. Amen? Psalm 119, verse 52, I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Right here, David is saying, I was afflicted, I was in trouble, I've been here before. So what I did was, I remembered what God did for me 20 years ago, and the thing that God did for me then is the same thing that He's going to do for me this time. Aren't you glad some things never change? Are you glad for the old paths? Or has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Let me, let me give you guys some help here. Young people and older folk, listen to me. This world is lost. Lost people don't increase in morality. They decrease in it. And now, I want you to ask this question. I want you to think about this. Do you believe that the sodomites in this country have an agenda of absolutely destroying all the children of America? The old people undertake that responsibility, that calling to warn these young people not to follow their pernicious ways. You may have grown up in a day when you left the door unlocked at night, the windows open, when you used to go to town and come back, and the door was unlocked, you didn't have to lock it, wouldn't worry about anybody. Who does that now? We lock everything up. Amen? The world didn't get better as we served the Lord. It got worse. And now we have a generation of young people. You online, you have a generation of young people that needs to know that there is some hope and some grace still and some traditional ideas still around for them to follow. I am blessed, I told you this a while ago, I am so blessed when I hear the young people respond to our church and to our ministry. 
Because that tells me that there is a generation of people still out there, young people, that want the old ways. They don't want this new stuff. Amen? They don't want Bethel Church to be playing rap music in church. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. I remembered the judgments of old. And by the way, we're not going to change our Bibles here. We used that we had a king, every, every preacher that I had preached out of a King James Bible, and that's the way it's going to be. For a long time until God takes us out of here. Amen. That's how it's going to be. Uh, Psalm 119, you might still be there. One, verse 152, concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. What God, this, boy, that's, here I go. These churches that have taken the King James, thrown it out for these new Bibles, they forgot this verse. I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. I also was guilty of that at one time. I was going to go after the new Bibles because that's what everybody wants. I was going to cater and give in to everybody and do what everybody wanted me to do. That way everybody would like me and I'd have a big church. God forgive me of that. Because I was willing to walk away from the old paths and the old precepts. Because once God founded them, they are founded forever. It is from this generation to that generation to that generation to even a younger generation that hasn't even been born yet. It's the same Bible. My mother used a King James. First Bible she gave me, I still use when I do a Watchman broadcast. It's up on that table up there. It's all ratty and tearing apart. But I'm still going to use it because it was a King James Bible. The Bible that I raised my children on was a King James Bible. Now my children are having children and my hope is that my children will raise their children on a King James Bible and nothing more, nothing else. Psalm 143 verse 5, I remember the days of old, I meditate on all thy works, I muse on the work of thy hands. Proverbs 23 10, look at this, remove not the old landmark. And enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Why should you not remove an old landmark? Because that's telling you where the old paths are. The old roadways. The old, the old landmark is right here. And see, what we had, Brother Matt, and Brother George, and Brother Ryan, Brother Jared, Brother Sterling, and Brother John up there, and all you brothers here, what we had going was... The preachers, they went in, they didn't, like, they didn't like how these new Bibles sound, or these old, this old King James sounded. They were trained at Bible college, and they were told that the old landmarks had already been corrupted out of this book anyway. So we need to establish new landmarks. So they started using these new Bibles and playing all this new music and doing all these new things, all the new ways that are ungodly and unbiblical. And what they did was they removed the old landmarks so that the younger generation would never be able to find their way. And they don't. Who in here knows at least two verses out of a King James Bible memorized? Raise your hand. Who in here has two verses out of an NIV memorized? We're a peculiar people. The newer generation of pastors just now coming out of Bible colleges, they don't know King James Bible verses. They were never trained in them, never raised in them, Brother George. That's scary. Because the older pastors, they all knew the King James, and usually when they preach, they quote them. Because they don't know the new, new versions, even though they preach out of them. But the younger generation is using new Bibles. That scares me. It scares me to think that we're going to have a generation of people who do not know the old landmarks. Because once the generation ceases to exist who knew the old landmarks, the old words, the old ways, it's gone forever. It's gone forever. Bethel Church, you listening online, don't let anybody steal away from us these old landmarks. 
That's, this is Route 66, by the way. Hey, 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 man. Amen. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Hold those traditions. Second Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. That means that they want to go these new ways, Ryan, let them go. We're not moving. Brother Lonnie Burks told me he used to preach revivals all over the denomination. And he says, now, because he has stuck with the King James Bible, no one calls him to preach anymore. Just very few. And he says, Mike, they accuse us of leaving. We didn't leave. We stayed. They're the ones that took the denomination and moved it. And we're not moving. Amen. Uh, where do I want to go here? I got way more verses and I got time to preach. Let me read this to you, Amos 9, 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it, how? As in the days of old. How did God say he was going to do this? Just like he did it in the old days. Isn't that refreshing? Because I'll be honest with you. I look at stuff like this and I wish that I had a time machine to go back into the 30s and 40s and live in that time. Only with, you know, some money. Stuff. A cell phone. Stuff, some of the stuff that we have now, you know. But I wish I could go back and live in those days. And we can't. We can't. We're not going back here. We're not going back here. And I wish sometimes I, I could go back and live in that time. I have, I have had dreams of traveling back in time and seeing like St. Louis back in the 30s. And I'd wake up and I'd go, oh man. So I'm not ever going to have the time machine. But I do have a promise that God is going to build something new in my life just like he did it in the days of old. We decorate our houses with antiques. Why do we do that? Because we want our house to look like something that we remember from when we were a child. We have that attachment to the past. And again, some traditions, they needed to pass away. But the traditions from here there still ought to be some people who remember the old ways to teach it to these young people. You know what John tells the churches, don't you? He tells the older men, teach the younger men. He tells the older women, teach the younger women. Amen? That's your responsibility. Teach these young ladies that there's a way to dress in the house of God. Teach these young men there's a way to dress in the house of God. Teach these young ladies there's a, there's a certain way. I'm looking at this world now and I'm just going, this place, this world's crazy. Do you know how long it took me to get up enough nerve to ask a girl to go out with me? It took months. Now they just text it. And usually, they don't use the phrase, go out. Believe it or not, a lot of children are jumping right into fornication and adultery and not going out anymore. That's the new way, and I don't want it. I want nothing to do with it. it causes problems, doesn't it? Can I get somebody to say Amen. Let's go to, um, oh, look at this, Micah 5, look at this. Here's Jesus. 
You don't like this. You don't think God's in tradition. You don't think God's in the old ways. Look at this. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from where? From old. If there's anybody who remembers the old days and the old ways, it's Jesus. Because he was always there. Amen. Look at him, Daniel chapter 7. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And look at what the Bible calls Jesus. Even though he died at a young age, 33, he is the ancient of days. He's the old man who knows all the old paths and knows all the old ways. Amen. He knows. He knows the old ways of how men dug a well without power equipment. How men great, built great big uh, uh, ships that sailed the seas out of wood with nothing but hand tools. I bet you guys, I don't think we have that kind of skill anymore. We, we got parasols and we got miters and this and that. We don't know how to build something with hand tools. Them old guys that know that stuff, they're dying off, aren't they? Of course, with some of that stuff, some people say, boy, it ain't like it used to be. And I go, thank God for that. It's a lot less work, I can tell you. But Jesus, people, he's the ancient of days. He knows the old ways and he knows the old paths. And they're right here. I'm going to encourage, I want to encourage everybody in this church. And I'm going to challenge you. You personally, in your lifetime, become as acquainted with this Bible as you possibly can. And then pray that God gives you the ability and the time and the opportunity to share the old ways that you have learned from God with a younger generation. Because believe it or not, people, I know there's a lot of very wicked young people out in this world right now. I know they're out there. But trust me. There are some young people who still want the old ways. May God use you to teach it to them. Now, take your Bibles, turn to uh, Psalm chapter 71. Psalm chapter 71. I'm going to close it. I'm going to close it out here. Let me say this to you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many years have run by you. I don't care how much water has flowed under your bridge. I don't care how many cars you've worn out, pairs of shoes you've worn out, purses you've gone through. You are never too old for God to use you. Never. In fact, where is that verse? Psalm 92, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. God's not done with you, George. God's not done with you, Linda Carmichael. Sister Betty Walsh. Brother Sterling. Nancy. Ron. Sandy. I'm pointing out all the old people, ain't I? I better stop there. God's not done with you. God's not you, got done using you. God's not done bringing forth fruit out of your life. If, he, if you think he is, then you'd surely have nothing left to live for. But I think you do. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. Children's children are the crown of old men. The glory of children are their fathers. The glory of young men is their strength. And the beauty of old men is the gray head. That means quit using Grecian formula. And just for men, amen. And if it's fallen out, let it fall out. God bless your hoary, bald head. Amen. Psalm 71, verse 9. Cast me not off in the time of old age. I want you to pray this. Psalms, I have found sometimes, are prayers. And believe me, I have prayed some of these psalms. Not, as, not chanting them as some mantra, 
but reading them out loud to God and saying, God, I need this in my life. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are at my adversaries to my soul. And let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. You're not done praising God. Amen. You're not slowing down. Speed it up. Because you're running out of time. Amen. Amen. Boy, this is good. Where did I leave off? Verse 15, my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. Look at that word. Look at that phrase. For I know not the numbers thereof. You know what he's saying? I don't know how many days I've got left. Hi. How you doing, darling? You're the reason why I'm doing this. That child, that baby needs us, this generation, to train them to be prepared for the time that she's going to need that training. Grandma and Grandpa, you're not done. You're not done raising children. You've got your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. You're not done. God's not finished with you. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. That's for those who have a problem, have a hard time getting up out of bed at night. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Go in, go in His... Hey! How would you like for God to pick you, being 90 years old, to have a baby? How'd you like that, sister? 90 years old. And have a baby. A child of promise. Listen. You, by the way, you know what that is? A pic, I've told you this before. You know what that's a picture of? Sarah having Isaac. Isaac is the new man born of the old man. God's not done with you people. Verse um, 20. Thou which thou hast uh, showed me great and sore trouble shalt quicken me again and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery and even thy truth, O oh my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O oh thou holy one of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they brought unto shame that seek my hurt. God's not done. God's still going to use you. God, you. I don't know how many days you got ahead of you. All we know is the number of days that we have behind us. But let's take what God has given us and what God has done for us and how God has blessed us and what God has taught us. Let's take that forward and give that and hand that down to another generation or they will be stuck without the Lord. They won't know. And God's going to call us and use us to give that to that younger generation. Who's ready for it? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But who's, who feels up to it? Who's ready for it? Who's ready to, to not wallow in the, in the, in the what, what am I, what am I self-pity? Oh I'm, oh, I'm old. Oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I just don't think I'm any use to that church anymore. You know who I miss? I miss Sister Waymar. I miss Sister Bernice. And Sister Bernice, if you're listening today, we love you. We haven't forgot about you. You, you two ladies were the reason why God was able to deal with me, a young man, about the ways that I was going. And I was able to tell Brother Jim Waymar, bless his heart, on the day his, we had his mother's funeral, he said, Mike, I appreciate what you've done here at the church. And mom was very proud of you. And I said, Jim, thank you for that. It means a lot to me because I decided one day that your mother should be honored by her church instead of embarrassed by her church. And I decided that the things that I had learned here from the old ways, we were going to reinstate and we were going to keep doing them. 
You know that birthday song we sing? Happy birthday to you. Well, you know how long we've been doing that? Ever since I've been here, and that's 1974. We've been doing that here. We have never sung another birthday song. Now, if another song came along that was better than that one, and we started singing it, I would not be put out. Maybe some people would, but that kind of stuff, we can change it if we want to, right? But when it comes to what we believe, what we stand for, things that we do, things that we don't do, if they come from this book, not only are we not going to move them out, we're going to pour some fuel down in them and start them back up again and get them going. We're going to get the old stuff running again. Amen? And I would love for Jefferson County to know that there is still a church here in everybody's neighborhood that's going to hang on to the old ways. We have people who come miles to this church because we keep the old ways. God's blessing that and God's going to use that. And I'm going to ask everybody, my age and above, my age and, and lower, the adults in this church, to pray this morning. You pray here, pray where you are. It doesn't matter if you feel too old to just, that you think you're not going to make it getting up from the altar. That's fine but to rejuvenate yourself, reassert yourself, revive yourself, or whatever it is, that you say, God, I don't know how many days I've got left on this earth, but God, if you'll use me all of those days, then use me. Because that generation needs it. Okay? Let's pray. You can bow your heads, you can come up here. Doesn't matter to me what you do, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray this morning, all right? Our Father, we come before you today, and God, we thank you, God. Father, we are sorry. We are sorry, first of all, for years that have been wasted. We're sorry, God, that it took so long to open our eyes to the truth. We're sorry, God, that we ever turned away from things that even our mama and our daddy was trying to teach us, God. We're sorry for that. We're sorry from walking away from the traditions that was given to us. I've had to tell my children, you weren't raised that way, and my mama told that to me. Mike, son, you were not raised that way. You know better. God, she was right. So, Father, we're sorry for turning away from the old paths and not seeking them. We're, God, we're thankful, God, that you had long-suffering with us, knowing, God, that eventually we would come back around. And, Father, here we are today. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you'd bless everyone that is praying to you right now. God, that you would put a fire in them. God, I can't, I don't know what to instruct them to do, Lord, after we get done praying. I don't know what to tell everybody, Lord, to keep this going. It's because I can't. God, if any one of us, or most of us, or all of us, if we are right now committing ourselves to you, Father, and saying, God, whatever days I have left, I want them to be far more fruitful and far more glorious than the days that are behind me. God, if you have people like that today, God, then use them. And Father, you lead them in the situations. You lead them in the path that they're to take. God, because I don't know what to tell them. I'm not that kind of pastor, God, and you know that. So, Father, whatever commitment's made to you today, whatever prayer's prayed, God, would you honor that prayer? Would you honor that commitment? They're not coming to me, telling me that they're going to serve me here. They're coming, God, to tell you that. And it's you that they're going to serve. Father, we think of these young people. We think of these babies being born in this church. 
God, they don't stand a chance out in this world. God, help us, dear God, to build walls of protection around them. Double walls, triple walls, God, that'll protect them from the filth and the wickedness that is in this world. God, our young people have access to things, God, that people never had access to before. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, Lord, that you would just use this church and use a, an older generation to, uh, in, in, to give wisdom to these young people. To show them the paths of righteousness. To show them the paths of the ways that they have followed. Even, Lord, to show them the mistakes that they made. And tell them that they ought not go down that path. It's not good. I was down there and it, it didn't turn out very well for me. God, would you use this church. And use this preacher. And use these people, Lord, in a way that we never thought could be done. And that way you... Get all the glory and all the praise. I thank you, God, for laying this message, Lord, to, in our ears and in our hearts. Help us, dear God, to commit to you. And, Father, you then take us and do what pleases and honors you in your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen. I don't have a problem with that. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph, the Bible says. Stand to your feet.